Well, hello and welcome. Um, thank you everybody who's joining us live. Uh, my name's Christian McNeil and this is the first Three Principal conversation for a month or two. So it's lovely to have you all with us and um, I'm particularly grateful to you, Alexandra, our guest this month, Alexandra Moore, who is the author of a number of books. But tonight we're going, it's tonight where I am, um, we're going to be focusing on her, your latest book called It's Not About the Food. Have I written that down correctly? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Which I have listened to on audiobook and I would highly recommend Um I really loved it, and um, and I thought you just that that your um, delivery was also you, you recorded it yourself, and I thought that was wonderful. So I'm um, I'm really grateful to you um, for uh, joining us tonight. You have written a number of other books, both fiction and non-fiction, and you also have another um, sideline, which is you are a publishing coach, and you helped me. And here's my partner in crime, Barbara Smith. <laughs> joining us today with our book but let's get back to um the the, the matter in hand and um and and i i think we've we've intended that this will be uh you know a conversation and i'd also I mean, i'd love to hear questions from any of the other uh, the other people who are joining that this um um this webinar today but I mean, would it be useful for you just to sort of say a little bit about how you came to write this book sure yeah place to start. well thank yeah that's a good great place to start well thank you for having me today so much christian it's lovely to see you and see some familiar faces as well it's great to be here it's a rainy tuesday morning here on vancouver island um yeah so i think one of the reasons i wrote the book was just that i I always feel compelled or I don't know um, passionate about when I learn something big I'd like to share it with other people so that's sort of what the impetus was and the an overeating habit was one of the things that I struggled with the most um, sort of one of the big kind of I don't know central issues of my adult life and when I came upon the three principles in 2017 um, was really the first time that things really started to shift for me in terms of over an overeating habit. And that was extraordinary because I'd spent 30 years, a little more than 30 years trying all kinds of things to change that overeating habit. And it was only when that I realized that you know, the way that we, we tend to look at life from, uh, from an outside in perspective, that, that actually flipping that equation on its head and understanding that life is inside out, that was the catalyst for lots of other changes for me in terms of my overeating habits. Now it's been the catalyst for lots of change in lots of other areas of my life. Um, but that was an area that just caused me so much suffering and was something that I'd wrestled with for so long. So when I saw, you know, when I had a series of insights and saw what was happening, I just really felt like I wanted to share what I'd seen. And um, yeah, that's really, that's really it. So that was, yeah, that was the impetus for that, for that book. Mm. And and obviously you write about this in the book, but um, for the benef benefit of people joining the call or watching the recording, would you be able to um, highlight some of those insights and, and, and how they impacted you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So there are a few different things I think I can point to as to what made a big difference to me. And I'll, you know, I'll just share them in the order they occur to me. This isn't um, a hierarchy or anything. So I guess one of the first things that I really realized was that um, doing a lot of thinking about an, a habit is, is adding gasoline to a fire. And that's, that took me a long time to really get my head around that. Um, because we're such thinking creatures, 
And I think it just, you know, innocently and naturally it comes to us to when we've got a problem to think about it. And, and so that was one thing. It, yeah, it took me a long time to kind of realize that less thinking was better, not more. And then you can't think your way out of <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, created problem. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, and then I guess uh, one of the people that I followed a lot, um, quite a bit, was Dr. Amy Johnson, whose work I really love, and she's got a great book called The Little Book of Big Change, and that was really helpful for me. And um, oh, I was going somewhere with that thought, and now it's gone. Sorry, I interrupted. You. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. Um, you were saying that uh, having um, a lot of thinking about a problem was like adding gasoline. Gas, to yeah, yeah. And then <clears throat> I was going to, I don't know, it's gone. It probably come back. Mm -hmm. So what I began to notice as I just began to learn more about the principles was that a couple of the habits that I had just fell away by themselves they didn't there wasn't anything that I did to make them go away and one of them was and I talk about this at length in the book um, was that I had a, a soda habit so I would have a can of soda every day at lunch and I'd done that for decades and and in the book too I say it's kind of like my version of smoking that you know I I quit all the time but I always just picked up the habit again a day or two later and so you know, the, the shortened version of that story is that eventually that habit just fell away by itself. I didn't do anything. I didn't have to bargain with myself about it. I didn't have to um, habit switch, you know, pick up something else in order to replace the soda habit. It just, it just fell away. And when that happened, and then there was another one, there was a potato chip habit I had too. And when those two things fell away separately, that's when I really thought, oh, okay, there's something going on here. There's something that, there is something to all this that I'm learning, which was really encouraging and lovely. And so that was a, that was not necessarily, in, those were not necessarily insights, but they were things that happened that were really uh, impactful for me. And then I would say one really impactful insight that I had was that, and I sort of call this my tipping point insight. So I had come to all the different modalities that I tried to use over the years to fix my overeating habit, thinking that I had this problem that I called the drive to overeat. That's just what I called it at the time. And and I came to the, prin the principles with the same idea. I have this problem. I have this thing that I call the drive to overeat and it needs to be fixed. And one of the really big insights I had was that in the end, I realized that that, um, that drive to overeat was like a sand creature. That's how I kind of, how the insight came to me. And a creature made of sand, you know, a monster. And the more I wrestled with it and the more I um, thought of it as a problem, you know, a thing in my life that I needed to fix or change, the more energy I gave the sand monster. And when finally, insightfully, I saw that that drive to overeat was made of thought, the monster just collapsed because there was nothing giving it any kind of energy anymore. So when that happened, that was pretty special. And, um, you know, there were a lot of moments in between various insights when I didn't see things so clearly, but when that happened, that was really sort of the tipping point. And that's when I started to, um, yeah, put the final touches on the book. Yeah. Very cool. I'm conscious, Alexandra, on this call, as far as I can see, I think everybody, uh, and no, you know, is, is sort of you know, initiated into the three principles, as it were, knows something about this understanding, has been touched by it to some extent. But if, if somebody were stumbling on this call, perhaps the recording out, you know, out of the blue, perhaps the name uh, was catching your eye and, and they say, well, 
where do I start with this? Okay, there's so I accept there's something here, but where where do I start? You know, how does this help me? Mm -hmm. um, what might you say to that person who knows nothing about the three principles, or yeah, and, and maybe doesn't need to, but you know, where wh what's the first thing they sh should do or think or not do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think. The, the, at the very beginning, when I first started learning about this, the thing that was the most impactful for me and that really had that initial feeling of turning my head in a slightly different direction and it was quite surprising to me was when I read Amy Johnson's book, The Little Book of Big Change, and she talks about how when we have a habit, any kind of habit, what we're actually trying to do is take good care of ourselves. So our habit is a sign of our mental health, not of our lack of willpower or weakness or laziness or whatever it is. So mental health in the sense of our, our mental well being. Hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And so we are all, so I would say that's a good place to begin to just explore that idea, which is, which was a little tricky for me to get my head around at the beginning, that we are innately well, um, that this field of psychology, the three principles is pointing us toward that wellness, rather than seeing us as um, creatures, people who can be damaged you know there's something about the human the human spirit the human being that is incorruptible it's always well and when we begin to see ourselves that way rather than a person who's been damaged and broken and has these failures and faults and these are things we need to cope with and repair um that that starts to shift things. And when we see that, when we pick up a habit, what we're really trying to do, we're not sabotaging ourselves, we're really trying to connect with that good feeling of well being that is innate to all of us. So that was, I think, for me, a really big shift at the beginning of this journey. And I would, yeah, I would just recommend people to, to try to look in that direction if they're absolutely beginners at understanding the inside out understanding <laughs> yeah yeah would you agree with that yeah nice i would and and you know as you know um <laughs> my area of familiarity or uh, actually there are so many <laughs> but um uh but um one of them is um in, in, in alcoholism and, and it's often said in the recovery world that for people who who have a drinking problem for people who are alcoholic that the drink was a solution i think there's something in that is is it's the wrong solution as it turns out or yeah. you know, it's a, a solution that becomes its own problem but uh, but i think that that, that it, people are drawn into it looking for a solution um rather than thinking this is the most self-destructive thing i could ever do and and, and i think you're saying that the, the same sort of thing yeah yeah that's absolutely true and you know no one go searching for ways to destroy themselves I don't think uh, just like you say we're looking for solutions where we're looking for ways to feel better and to connect with that innate well-being yeah 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 mm -hmm. um and the I mean obviously just reading your book or listening to the audio version is 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 um something that can be really helpful and and for for myself well, you know there's a kind of misnomer that goes around or a misunderstanding i think in the three principles world about you know the do nothing and it's not so that's certainly not an accurate description of what it's been like for me over the the last decade because i have what i have done is um completely followed my nose and and, and what i'm curious about and what appeals to me and your book was one of those things and um but it's, it is a very different way of learning and changing than what we've been conditioned to expect, I think. Is it, um, mm. and, and it sounds like you're saying very much the, the same thing, this, this experience of changing through insight, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which is kind of much more effortless. It, it, re it really is. And yeah, it's a, the, 
I understand what people are trying to point toward when they say do nothing. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think it's an unfortunate phrase occasionally because there are things we can do to increase our understanding. You know, one of the, I listen to a lot of podcasts and um, videos and webinars like this, and I read a lot. So those are things that I did, quote unquote, that helped me to to see what was really there yeah mm -hmm. yeah and as well as as well as the book you are also you also have an online course that people can sign up for is that right that's right yeah and so um if you so yeah i will put, put the details in the the notes to the recording but it, it'd be helpful if you did just in case anybody wants to go straight there or well, yeah that's right how do they find that alexandra yeah so and i'm i'm blanking out on the link here and i should have oh, well listen I'll, um, folks relax i'll put it up later yeah okay yeah actually no i think i've got it here at the back of the book uh because there is a sort of a smart Oh, there's a discount for readers. URL. Oh, yeah. So alexandraamore.com forward slash freedom program. Mm. Yeah. And if you happen to read the book, there's a coupon in the back of the book um, for 50% off. And it's a, yeah, it's a seven day online video course that just goes a little bit deeper into what I talk about in the book and has some um, visual aids <laughs> and that kind of thing, stuff I couldn't include in the in the book itself and it was yeah it was really fun putting that together kind of expanding on those ideas and um and being able to speak a little more casually than you would writing a book sure hmm. mm -hmm. and it, it in terms of the you know what it looked like before and after would you would you be able to say a little bit about about that because it and, and uh, you know, from what you said before, there wasn't a moment of um, of one change. But you know, you've described having um, an issue with overeating for some time before you came across this one, and and and, it, and something has clearly happened in your life. But I wonder if you could, if if, if it's not too um, nosy, uh, if you, if you could say a bit more about what that looks like, you know, how or how that feels on the inside for you. Mm, yeah. Well, I think it's such a good point you made at the beginning of that question is that it's not something that happened overnight. There wasn't, it wasn't just like there was a switch that I flipped eventually, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, um, that it was a really gradual progression. And um, I talk about how it, it, looking back, it felt like a sandcastle, you know, on the beach and that gradually just exposing myself to this understanding and learning more and reading and all that kind of thing it was like the edges of the sandcastle just gradually began to crumble which was really nice and I suppose in hindsight too that when we use uh, other kind of in or outside in uh, strategies like diets or restricting our eating or whatever the technique is that we're trying to use um oh god i've lost my thought again sorry <laughs> i was saying to christian just before we came on i'm dealing with a, a time of depression and it's it's i swear it's dropped my iq by about 50 percent <laughs> <laughs> so yeah when we use outside in strategies oh it can often seem like what we're looking for is a big moment, you know, where a, a light switch gets flipped and that's it. From that moment on, everything is different and, um, and we're changed. Um, and I think so very often it, it just doesn't happen that way. And with this understanding too, it, it wasn't like that. It was kind of a gradual shift. The more I saw, the more I understood. And um, so, so, before I came across this understanding, I think um, the way that I ate was really about comfort 
which is, I guess, why I really connect with that idea that we're always trying to take care of ourselves Mm -hmm. and to kind of simulate a feeling of well-being if we're not connected to it um, within ourselves. And so I tended to have really specific foods that I found comforting, like the soda is a great example. And it felt like without those things, I wasn't um, comforted. You know, I wasn't kind of at my center, for lack of a better word. So, so for me, that's, that's what it looked like very, yeah, just very specific foods that comforted me. And I know for everybody, it's not the same. Some people have you know, different kinds of habits or whatever, but the, the objective that we have, no matter what we're doing is the same is that we're trying to connect with that feeling of well being, And, and then, yeah, that just, just by continuing to look in that direction, things began to shift for me. And as I said before, habits just sort of gradually started to fall away. And that yeah that that moment of insight understanding that i was the one actually fueling the fire uh, or giving energy to that monster that i was wrestling with was a big one and once i did see that my eating habits changed quite a bit um which was very gratifying and rewarding for sure after all those years of struggle Mm. absolutely yeah. 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 Does that answer your question? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good. <laughs> and Alexandra, would you be up for answering questions or um, engaging with with people who, who are on the call? Because I would love to open it up, and it, and it is really helpful if people have anything that they want to ask or feedback. I mean, please do come in. Um, yeah, I'd love that. Mm to answer specific questions yeah if, if, yeah. You have, if you have any please just unmute yourself and and come in otherwise it'll be more from me <laughs> <laughs> well if no one else is going to speak up i'll jump in hi hi good to see you good to see you too <laughs> yeah um, I loved your book. I wrote to you and I told you that. Yeah, thank it was you just so much. Really, really well done. Um, so um, thank you for doing it. It was great. Mm, my pleasure. Thank you. So I don't actually have a question, but I do have a couple of things that I just wanted to share about my own journey. I've been overweight since I was about two. <laughs> uh, overweight. And, um, you know, I... I've had a couple of really whopper insights along the way um, that I just sort of wanted to share one that I thought was really very, very powerful. Um, about eight years ago, about when I learned the principles, I was, uh, we were going kayaking, my partner and I were going kayaking. And um, I said, you know, Eddie, we're going to be out there all day, you know, we might get hungry you know, so I should really take something. And he turned to me and he said, I I don't have any problem being hungry. Mm. And it was like, boom, that's it. That's it. I have this problem with being hungry. Like I tell myself hunger, this sensation I have in my, I'm starving. Like I hear my family all say, I'm starving. Like they're standing there eating potato chips before dinner. (laughs) I'm starving. (laughs) It's like, so what's wrong with being starving? Like, wow. Yeah. Mm. So I got that. It was like, oh, that's the story you tell yourself. Like, I can't tolerate this sensation in my belly and I therefore need to feed it rather than it's a sensation that will pass, you know, if you don't or it won't and then you'll eat something. But it was just sort of that was that really hit me in a really huge way. Yeah, that Uh, is huge. Yeah. So the other one I just wanted to share with you too, there was a tremendous amount of shame for me um, as a kid growing up in the 60s. It was really, really not cool to be overweight. 
Mm. You know, our role models were Twiggy and, you know, there was an advertisement on television that size six is where the fun is. And I would always say I was born with a thigh that was size six. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, I was just ashamed about my size and I was shamed by people around me, you mm -hmm. know, like I had to go to the school nurse and she would yell at me. And I mean, it was just, oh God, it wasn't good. But anyway, so yeah. I've carried that shame, you know, it's there, it still stays with me to some degree, but you know, I don't like, I don't really pay that much attention to it anymore, but I just wanted to share something. One of my clients who I've had for quite a long time um, has been dealing with her granddaughter who's got a weight issue and um she's helping her with her weight issue um and anyway her daughter is being teased um brutally by her younger brother mm. so this granddaughter is i think she's 15 turns to this kid and says you seem to have more of a problem with my weight than i do what's <laughs> wrong with being fat and I was like, my hero, my hero, my yes. hero. I want to meet this kid. Like, <laughs> am I going to have that kind of clarity? I was like, oh, I, that was, that was life changing. <laughs> I really, I, that, I mean, that just happened not long ago. I had that. I was like, oh, how wonderful, how wonderful. Isn't that's that amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. so beautiful. Wow. Good for yeah. her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to share those things. Thank you so much for writing the book. And it's oh, my, great. my pleasure. I mean, you bring up such good points. And I think that I can really relate to both of them, that feeling of shame about our weight. I carried that around for all, you know, I've carried that around my whole adult life. And, and unfortunately, I think that that adds to that, you know, gasoline on the fire thing, because we're sort of adding, yeah, layers of embarrassment or shame or, and then, it, and then the problem, it feels like more of a problem and it feels more urgent. And, um, and yeah, and I think that really, that sense of shame really can, for me anyway, contributed to having to continue to overeat because then I needed to comfort myself, right? from the shame <laughs> so yeah i yeah i can really relate to that that's nothing really... nothing like it nothing yeah. like shame to really set off a food binge you know yeah. i think <laughs> that that certainly was my experience yeah absolutely me too yeah and then and i think you're... one of the other insights was that i just was like well there's no one size fits all body you know like who who's measuring stick were you measuring yourself and your body with you know, yeah, I'm very yeah. comfortable now with the fact that I really like food. I do. And I eat, you know, well, <laughs> and yeah, I enjoy yeah. it and it's all good. You know, I mean, like, I don't, I don't carry that around anymore, but I also am really comfortable with having a body that's a little overweight. I was very ill a few years ago and my body was wasting, literally it was first oh. time in my life. And every time I stepped on the scale, I was losing more and more weight and it was really scary. And I remember saying, if I ever get over this, I am never going to worry about a few extra pounds. And guess what? A few extra pounds came back on and I started worrying about it. And then I was like, isn't that interesting? You know? Yeah. So again, just to see, and as I said to you in my email, my weight's now stabilized at where I was in fifth grade. So yeah, you know, it just kind of like became this non-issue when I just started to see like, I don't have to have the same size body as somebody who doesn't want to eat who doesn't enjoy food, who doesn't, you know, really care about food. I like it a lot, you know, and I'm yeah. good with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's lovely. Well, and I too, I want to address your insight about having, having a problem with the feeling of hunger. And, you know, I think that's such an important point because first of all, we're all going to have our own insights related to this, you know, obviously it's, it's not going to be the same insight for every one of us. There's no prescription about that, but yeah, just that, that, uh, you know, I've had bumped into people that in sort of a similar situation where they just don't even think about food. And it has been sometimes insightful moments for me realizing, oh, there's really some sort of, yeah, sort of some sort of attachment that I have to it. 
and attachment to the discomfort that might come from being a little hungry. Yeah, so that's that's really incredible. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when you were talking there, Barbara, um, I was um, reminded of a, a, an, an insight I had in, in relation to this, and it was just about the amount of thinking. It kind of touches on what you were saying earlier, Alexandra, but the amount of thinking that you can have around um, you know, food, eating, weight, the failure to lose weight, you know, and, and, and if you were to, to, to um, I came across the, the term cognitive load a few years ago, and I thought it's such an appropriate term to, um, you know, to describe that, that, um, that the absolutely just, you know, if you, if you were to try and um illustrate the amount of thinking that's coming up it would be phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and um uh, and the the distress that comes with that you know just that constantly living in self-judgment and comparison and the, the sense of shame and failure and just all, all of that um is horrific absolutely horrific and I, and I was thinking also that so many people and it doesn't it isn't only people who are overeating that can be caught up in that. I think that it, that's um, that applies to many people and dare I say it, particularly women. But, you know, sometimes I catch um, friends or people in my family who uh, have um, uh, and they have a certain look where you can and you can see that they're either you know, ch sort of checking out if, if it's me, my way, or they're, or I can see them do it to other people. And there's a certain kind of critical, which is very different from just taking in what's maybe what someone's wearing or how they look. For the day. There's, there's, there's a sort of sleekness to it. <laughs> and, 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 and one can feel that as well. You know, what you do with that thinking is another thing. But, um, you know, none of that seems to be, to, to me, to be um, helpful. Yeah, um and um and the more you know the more i've been able to put down some of my thinking around on this whole subject the more freedom there is mm. you know there, there's and it's interesting because as you said uh, i don't know if it was you alexander or you barbara that said this but we we all have our own insights and one of the things that i've seen is that actually there's a certain kind of hunger that is it is good for me to deal with otherwise i get in a worse and worse mood and then when i come across food i'm like you know I'm moving it up <laughs> <laughs> no time to cook properly so there is wisdom that you know guides me to, to to i do better if i'm if i'm sort of planning for my main meal rather than trying to get it on the hoof and i and i eat things that are more satisfying and enjoyable and um that kind of enhance my life rather than i don't know 10 packets of crisps and not really that but that kind of thing you know yes yeah yeah, I love that term cognitive load. I hadn't heard that before. That's lovely. And yeah, it does feel like a, um, that, that, yeah, sort of the longer we struggle with something like this, the more thinking is heaped, you know, on top of what we've already got. And it just continues to pile on. Um, yeah, a bit like the proverbial snowball going downhill. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Is there anybody else that would um, on the call that would like to come in? I'll come in. Um, hi, Alexandra. It was lovely to listen to you there. And uh, I, as soon as I saw the uh, the notification that Christian put up on Facebook about what you were going to be talking about, I just jumped right on there because food is such a struggle for me and has been for such a long time. Um, at varying degrees, you know, sometimes it's been better than others, but, mm -hmm. uh, and I immediately downloaded your book and read your book, which I really enjoyed. Um, and, you know, I've done all probably the things that you've done. I've been on diets over the years and I've been to OE and I've been to FA and I've done all sorts of things. And, and I've also had great recovery from alcoholism, you know, I've been in AA for years and my experience with alcohol was that it, my desire to drink and it was just removed. It, it did just go 
and what mm-hmm. felt like overnight it just went wow. but then but then I had to kind of deal with my my head and it took a wee while still in recovery to get myself straight and then the, the cigarettes you know and that was the same as the alcohol that just disappeared as well mm-hmm. but then I was left with the food <laughs> and the food is by far been the most difficult thing um habit whatever you want to call it to to kind of deal with in my life and and I did go to OA a number of years ago and it got a lot better and it did feel like kind of overnight again it sorted itself and I didn't have that same drive um, Mm -hmm. that you kind of talk about to overeat Mm -hmm. and it was like that for quite a wee while but it's got it's gone back the way you know I would listen to you talk about your son's castle thing and that there's kind of crumbling at the sides and I'm thinking mine's building itself back up again and it's <laughs> it's going in the opposite direction that I wanted to go and I have a lot of thinking about it and I, every week come back into that way of thinking right today that that's it I'm going to start eating healthy today and I'll, I'll do my FA plan but I don't want to do all the, all the other rules that come along with an FA but I'll do the food couple. And then it lasts for a while and then I fall away from it and, and, and I'm putting weight on so my clothes are not fitting so I feel uncomfortable all the time. And oh, it is. And it, it just like listening to Christian and Barbara as well and just thinking about the amount of time I spend thinking about it. And, mm-hmm. and it's so, you know, when Christian was asking earlier to, to hear your story and what it was like before and what it's like now, and I just want to hear, uh, has it worked? What's your eating like now? Have you lost weight? Do you know, I want because I want what I want that. I really want that, and, and I want that to happen. And I, I sometimes I have got confused with the, the principles and this idea that we don't do anything. So I'm thinking, well, if I've not to do anything, I just don't quite. I can't I get that because I'm like, do I, how do I just give up? You know, you talk in your book about that kind of surrendering just to the way things are and. Mm-hmm. And then gradually things started to change on their own when maybe when you weren't trying so hard. But I don't quite know how to let go of that and not try and not try to fix it. Yeah. And I, yeah, I find that quite quite difficult to do because I think, well, if I don't do anything, it's just going to get worse. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't yeah. stick to my diet, I'm going to put on more weight and oh uh, yeah, all that stuff. But yeah. yeah, so I'm just waiting for the miracle to happen. Hopefully, one day I'm <laughs> home. I hope the food will disappear. The drive to overeat will disappear the same way that drinking did and smoking did. And yeah. mm-hmm. but anyway, it's a journey. But it, yeah, it absolutely is. And I think that's that's so interesting to hear about your your drinking and smoking and yeah. how they just fell away. That just amazing. disappeared. Yeah, yeah. incredible. And is there anything uh, you know it's such a tricky thing to ask but I guess a couple of things occur to me one is was there any were, did you have any insights about those two things that um, might help you with eating and that you know maybe not but it just you know, I just wonder, because with drinking and smoking and eating, you know, it's, you're all, it's all motivated by the same desire um, Mm. to feel, you know, to feel good, to feel comforted, whatever, you know, whatever the word is, and that they are really, again, you know, pointing toward I guess something that really helped me is, is that recognition that, um, you know, you doing these habits, um, is, is that perfect feedback system. You read about that in the book, Mm -hmm. right? It's, it's actually not a problem. Um, it's, it's just something that's trying to wake us up Mm -hmm. and remind us oh yeah, there's, there's innate, infinite well-being there. And this is, this is our body's way or our, I don't know what our human, the human system's way of getting our attention. So when we, in a way, when we think of it, that 
it's a problem and it's something we need to get rid of, that's actually not the case. It's, it's that, you know, a, a little bit of an alarm trying to wake us up. Um, now that doesn't, um, well, I think looking in that direction was, was one thing that really helped me um, just continuing to remind myself that this isn't, yeah, it's not, it's not a problem. It's, it's um, the, the way that we work and it, it's perfect really, you know, in what's happening. And I know it doesn't feel that way for sure. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I, I will, sorry, did you want to respond to that at all? No, 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 I was just. Okay. Yeah. Understanding. Yeah. And then I'll, because, you know, this is a safe space, Christian, you've just created such a great community here. I'll be completely transparent and say that right when I published the book, so a month ago, um, I, and so I had been, my eating habits had, had changed in the spring of this year and um, sort of May, June, July. And I was losing weight. I'd lost 10 or 12 pounds and it was all headed in the right direction. And then I hit this little boat of depression that I'm in right now. And all that has just gone to hell in a handbasket. So um, I'm not eating, eating right now at the moment in a way, in a way that I would rather not eat. So that's been a real challenge, especially because I've been <laughs> doing webinars like this and talking about um this issue and but what i know for sure is is really helpful is not kind of worrying about it too much it's that whole thing of i don't want to add more thinking to whatever's mm -hmm. going on so um and the I feel, and I haven't had much experience with depression, so this is kind of unusual, it's sort of a new experience for me, but I believe that this feeling this way, feeling depressed is like any other thing we go through in life. It's thought coming to life within us, you know, within me moment to moment. And just like the weather moving through the sky, it will, it will move on. It's, it's unpleasant while it's happening, but um, worrying about it or beating myself up about it or wondering when it's going to go away is only going to, I think, mm -hmm. make the problem worse. So even though um, I'm not eating the way I would like to right now, I'm, I'm, trying to just let that be what it is and and knowing that it will shift and change on its own when when things change again so um so i'm what i'm addressing is um that even when i even though i've seen um and had a lot of insights about my overeating habit it's interesting that then um it wasn't just like flipping that switch it hasn't um it was that way for a while but now it's not again and it would be really easy to get upset about that and i have had moments of feeling like a fraud uh in the last month but what's really helped me is just continuing to understand that um th yeah the way the way we work and that um this too shall pass <laughs> mm. thanks yeah. thanks for sharing that oh you're welcome thank you i think i think you touched on in a really important difference with um the, the whole thing of eating and overeating because eating is something that we ha we have to do and um mm -hmm. and as barbara touched on we all have that we all do have completely different body types and and, and so on and, and um the 
you, you know, when I think about my own journey, you know, the, I would describe my, my the, the problems that I, I had around food and overeating were probably the worst. And, um, you know, once in my teens and then once in my, in my 20s where I was ca caught up in bulimia and it was just horrific. It was just horrific, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of, I felt out of control and, um, of my behavior, but I also felt really isolated and alienated in a way that I hadn't even with drinking because it was so uh, it was so unacceptable it was so lonely it was so you know just awful and I had and I had an insight then before I'd come across the principles way back then and I just thought I don't care what weight I end up I'm just not doing this anymore I'm not doing the, the binging and purging thing and it was and it sounds like that was an effort of will it it wasn't there was a recognition that um, and 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 that insight sort of gave me the power to not binge and purge, you know. And and over the years, I've had more in, more and more insights to, to the point where I where I am really comfortable. And I do think that my body and all of our bodies are absolutely extraordinary things that no computer scientist could make, you know, no ro robotics engineer could make. I mean, we have this absolutely phenomenal system that you know goes on without much maintenance for decades um and and you know i noticed if if it's okay to refer to something that you said donna when you when you you know that thing that, that thought that you might be having if, if i keep on doing this x thing's going to happen in the future but it's coming that, that there seems to me to be power in coming back to to, to the now and mm -hmm. um and the future sort of takes care of itself as um I think as, um, uh, it, it, you know, that with more and more sort of clarity and insight and less of the cognitive load and, and kind of, you know, what, what, what I, what I find is that m much of the time these days, my, that I'm able to follow the inner promptings to, to, to eat. And, and a strange thing has happened because I'm the person that literally couldn't stick to a diet for a day. And I'm not, I am not, in fact, you know, let's face it. I mean, if I got up at eight and the diet would be broken by midday, <laughs> we weren't anywhere near 24 hours. But a strange thing has happened and I find that I quite naturally don't usually want breakfast. And occasionally I do, like today I did. Um, but it's just, and, and as though I'm finding my own natural rhythm, which is very different to, because I used to be told breakfast is the most important day of, <laughs> meal of the day. It's just rubbish, rubbish. And, and what is interesting to me and um, what, what I love about being involved in this work is there's just always more to be seen. And it's always a process of shedding, subtraction and freedom emerging you know and and when i think you know i really hadn't thought about that girl you know that bulimic girl or young woman for a long time until on this call and i think you know the difference today um you know i just i really enjoy my my, my life and my body and i do lots of physical things and i love color and i love you know just and, and you know clothes and makeup and you know i'll be going to yoga later on in a couple of hours after this you know it's just um, what freedom and I, I, you know, I really couldn't care less what, what I look like or if other women are doing the kind of up and down thing, or, you know, and, and I'm grateful for that. And I'm, and I'm really healthy, you know, I'm 60 years of age. I'm not on any medication and, you know, it, it's, um, um, so I think that what's on offer might, it's maybe getting appreciative of that bit first and, and, and it's less about aspiring to be a, you know, a size whatever. Mm -hmm so many pounds and and um that you know it's not about putting the demands on the body but so much as being grateful for what for what what, what is emerging what's here already um, mm. yes so judge, well said. you know that because it's just a thought that's just a, i mean kind of mm. you know sometimes the judgment comes up and you know sometimes that all that but that but the you know i think that being more Anytime I'm thinking I'll feel less shame or judgment if my size changes or the number of the scales change, I'm, I'm mistaken. I'm outside in and I'm wrong. You know, mm -hmm. I'll feel better when I feel better. I'll feel better when I stop entertaining judgmental thoughts or shameful thoughts. And, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thanks for prompting those memories. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That was great. Oh, that's all. 
we do have a few more minutes if there's you know i see there are other people in the, the call i mean please do we'd love to hear from you if there's anything that you want to ask yeah I, i'd like to share something christian oh, oh, thank you um yeah it's this it's quite remarkable this conversation the timing of this call and 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 the synchronicities of things that you've said christian and, and barbara as well like i had a a really interesting conversation with my parents the other day they just moved here recently to literally five minutes down the road from where I live. And that in itself is like an incredible thing for me because I haven't lived anywhere near them for 42 years. And now all of a sudden they're on my doorstep. But um, I was visiting or helping them unpack the other day. Well, I've been visiting and I'm helping them unpack for the last two weeks, every, almost every day. And I was there the other day and I had, I, I I had this, it really took me by surprise. I had this comment um, that my stepdad, he's, they've been together for 50 some odd years. Like he's more like a dad than my stepdad, but he said something to me that really kind of like threw me and it was to do with my weight. So I know that I, I know that I'm overweight, but, um, and, and I don't know if, it, if this was actually coming through him from my mom who may, I don't know, I'm just guessing, but I, it felt like it was something that my mother would have said to me, but it was coming through him and maybe they had planned it. I have no idea, but uh, cause my mother is um, very, very much into fashion, into makeup, into how she looks. She's had a ton of cosmetic surgery on her face. She's um, slim um, and, yeah, it's, it's, so it's all about beauty. Physical beauty is hugely valuable to her. And uh, and out of the blue, we were just sitting there having a coffee break. And uh, my, my stepdad called me over to where he was sitting. He goes, Lynn, come here, come, come here for a minute. And I'm standing in front of him and he's sitting on the chair and he's kind of like pointing to my belly. And he says, if you, you know, if you, you know, if you, um, and they're also very wealthy, okay, their they're, they're money is no object. So he said, you know, if you like, you know, lose a little bit, a little bit of weight, you're a beautiful girl, you'd be even more beautiful. And if, if you can, if you can um, do that for yourself, he said, I will um, gladly pay for you to like have a liposuction in your neck, because I've got like a like this, and I'm, and I was just like blown away by this. I was like, oh my god! And the response that I came out with was, I don't know where this came from, but it was quite a powerful insight that I had right in the moment. Like it was no pre-planning. I didn't expect this to happen. And like I said, you know what? I said I know that I'm a little overweight, and I'm actually okay with it. I said I actually honor my body. I said. Like you said, Christian, a few minutes ago, I'm 63 years old. I exercise every day. I'm not on any medication. My body has been absolutely amazing for me. It, it serves me really well. And um, I, I said, and what you're saying, what you're thinking that I should be doing, um, it, it seems that you've got more of an issue with my body than I do. But also like in this modern day culture that we live in, we're rammed down our throats all the time about like, you've got to look like this. And like, the, you know, the slimming industry is huge, you know, like, and like, and me, social media and media and just the whole marketing thing about losing weight is massive. And we're obviously influenced by it. Um, but like, I, that's, I don't value that. Like if you look, it, it, like even, I don't know, a hundred years ago or like at the turn of the century, you see these big, amazing paintings in museums of these voluptuous, beautiful women. And they were like honored, like they were like wealthy. They were like successful because they were voluptuous. Like it's only today in this today, modern culture that we live in that we're all thinking that we should be skinny. <laughs> you know? Anyway, yeah, so I, I said that, to, I was saying that to him, not word for word, but that was the message I was getting to him. And, and he just sat there and he goes, yeah, you're right. <laughs> that was the end of the conversation. They haven't mentioned it since. But I walked away, I came home that day and I was really, really 
bothered me that he would even have the balls to say something like that. You know, I was like, oh my God. But then I guess, you know, I'm looking, I always try to see everything from all perspectives. And then I just thought, you know, that he's just caught up in his thinking. He thinks that that's important. You know, let, let, I just let it be and it hasn't been mentioned since. And it probably never will again. <laughs> I guess thought I'd share that because it was all these little threads going on in this conversation that was, that was, telling me, screaming at me, you got to share this, Lynn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was great, Lynn. Thanks for sharing. And, and I love that you just in the moment were able to respond to him that way with the truth about how you felt about yourself yeah. and your body. And I agree. He's, he likely thought he was being helpful. Yes. You know, not I realized hurtful. that a day or so yeah. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had someone make a comment to me a couple months ago, same thing. And I, it was really hurtful. And I realized afterwards, you know, he probably thought he was being helpful. But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I was really niggled and it really bothered me for mm -hmm. maybe an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then I then I started seeing what you what you just said, Alexander. Mm -hmm. I, I think he was trying to be helpful. He wasn't trying to be vicious or no. anything like that or nasty. Of course not. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. He just thought that that might be something that I would want to do. Mm -hmm. And I think they're. I think also. I think they worry that um, I'm 63 years old and I've been single for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, can, I know they're always talking about you know getting a getting a, a into a relationship. And I think that they think that you know because uh, that that would make me more attractive to a potential man coming into my life or something like that. You know, that's just the way they're thinking. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially as your mom, if you, as she seems to value that given her experience yeah, with very highly, plastic yeah. surgery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just loved your retort. I just love the way that came out. I just, you know, wisdom <laughs> yeah. spoke. <laughs> wisdom spoke. I know. I think, I think they're a bit taken aback by it actually. I don't even know where it came from. It just came out. <laughs> <laughs> no, good for you. Good for yeah. You. Good for you. <laughs> um, we are coming towards the yeah we are coming just to, towards the the um the top of the hour um to, uh, alexandra um i want you uh, i'm going to give it back to you just in case there's anything that you want to close out with and one other thing i think you're you're, you're also launching a podcast am i right on the at some point in the future on this or have i got that wrong no you've got that right yeah it's going to be called unbroken mm -hmm. and it'll be um, really, it'll be about the inside out understanding, you know, with a, maybe a focus much of the time on uh, our relationships with food, but I wanted to also talk to people beyond the boundaries of that and just mm -hmm. talk about the inside out understanding. And I had hoped that it would be launched already, but um, um, as we're recording this, but this little situation that I'm going through has prevented that. So yeah coming soon to a podcast app near you very <laughs> <laughs> cool well it'll come at the right time that's right yeah yeah exactly and and thank you so much for for being available today and i, I mean I, i've really enjoyed the call and, I, and, I, and thank you everybody who's joined us and who's contributed um um but it, 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 it perhaps i could just hand it back to you to 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 close us out alexandra you've got any final words or thoughts yeah well thank you so much for having me today christian it's always such a pleasure to talk to you and and um it's been so nice chatting with everybody here and um yeah i don't know that i have any <laughs> official <laughs> closing remarks or anything but you can find out more about me at alexandraamore.com and uh the book is available in paperback ebook uh, large print and audiobook and wherever you buy books and if um, you can also ask for it at your public library or at your local independent bookstore that's those are options as well so um, yeah just thanks to everybody for being here for being um, yeah being willing to share your personal stories I really appreciate it it's been lovely to hear from everybody 
yeah yeah thanks very much thanks everybody thanks for people some people have made comments and haven't come in so yeah by all means have a look at the chat in the next couple of minutes before we close out but thank you very much alexandra mm -hmm. it's been a, a great call thank you everybody